Hey, this is JP from Web3T coming at you with a very special episode with Miguel and Eric, along with my faithful co-host and compatriot, Matt Bartlett. Very excited to be here. We got a lot of cool stuff to talk about and the way I would describe this episode as TradFi meets crypto. So we're hitting it head on and we're very happy you're here. So if you're liking this video, give us a like, give us a subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Hey everyone, I'm Matt Bartlett, the head of NFT community in Web3 with Van Eck. Part of the mission with our community NFT project is to connect Web3 with traditional finance. And today I'm thrilled to introduce our community member, Eric, from Verde Capital. Uh, really just the first NFT community member to join us on our show, as well as to Miguel from L1, a, a crypto native solution aiming to help crypto natives take better control of their, their wealth management. So welcome to you both and thrilled to have you. Great to be here. Yeah, let's get right into it. Miguel, what's going on? What do you got? Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm Miguel. I'm the co-founder and CEO at L1 Advisors. Um, at L1, we're building a financial um, advisory platform for crypto natives. And so our, our, our ultimate goal is to help uh, people that are self-custodied, people who are um, very active participants of, of decentralized protocols. Um, we want to help them make better financial and investment decisions. And the way that we do that is uh, connecting them to financial advisors who speak their same language. Uh, we help them with all of their financial planning or their advisors help them with all their financial planning, uh, tax planning, risk management, portfolio um, optimization and, and more. So yeah, great to be here. Thank you for, for the invite. And Eric, TradFi in the house. What do you, what's going on? How, how'd you get into crypto? You know, is your advisory focused on crypto? Yeah, so um, uh, in short, here's a little bit of background. I work with Verde Capital Management. We're out in Metro Detroit. And for the most part, uh, our mission is very much tied to being fiduciaries, working in someone's best interests, which is something you don't really see in the rest of financial services, where most of this is littered with brokers or insurance people. So uh, for us, our mission is very much taking it from thousandaires to millionaires and helping people grow beyond that. And then even more specifically, helping to educate them about their money, help guide them to make better decisions, and also help them to grow in all aspects of their life beyond just growing a portfolio, but also allowing them to grow um, emotionally, allowing them to grow physically, allowing them to grow in every aspect to where there's life fulfillment. I'm really interested in, in learning how you and Miguel started working with each other. How, how did you all connect What's sort of the, the relationship partnership now? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the, the relationship started by diving into different DAOs and just getting more informed on the space, being able to really get acclimated, right? That's how all of us, I think, have sort of embraced Web3. It's you, you dive in, you sort of go down the rabbit hole, uh, the proverbial rabbit hole. Um, I met him through just one of the DAO chats where he was suggesting some of the things that he wanted to do. And in my mind, he didn't see this, but I got all giddy and excited. I was like, oh, wow, I thought this was actually going to be years away. I thought this was years away, not going to happen now. And I reached out and said, hey, I'd, I'd love to just learn more about what you're doing. And uh, uh, additional conversations flourished since then. Uh, but uh, there's a big topic surrounding wealth creation, right? And different generational wealth. There's something very significant about being able to build wealth in different ways. And I think crypto can be a very big part of that. Miguel, you're, you're L1 advisors. Why don't you walk us through what that is? You, you know, what you see is the problem that you're trying, you know, that you've been talking to Eric, you guys are working on stuff together. What's the problem? What are you trying to solve for? The biggest problem is there, there, there is a, a new generational uh, shift and, and cultural shift really happening where we're, people um, uh, are, are having a, a different perspective on how their money should work for them, where their money should be, uh, how available their money should be. And we're seeing a, a, a huge, um, basically a huge movement uh, right now with, with crypto natives, with people who are um, very heavily involved in, in the crypto community, who are not only investors, but are, are users themselves, are even builders, people that are building out these protocols. And, and, and these people are, are very comfortable having a large portion of their assets on chain. And so 
as, as one of those people myself, um, I tried uh, to work with different financial professionals on my finances, on, on making better decisions, on doing something as, as, as simple as tax planning. And when most of your assets are on chain, things break because uh, traditional financial advisors, traditional financial professionals simply don't have the tools uh, to sit down with someone like me and, 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 and look at my assets and, and look at where my money is. And so that, that's what we wanted to, to change when we start talking to other people who are, are in a similar situation. What we're doing is, is, is we've built a product that allows you to basically look at your entire on-chain um, net worth. So you, you can connect all of your wallets, we'll build your dashboard so you can track um, to your, your net worth in real time. And then we'll give you a risk score. Um, we, we were very excited about basically being able to give you a measurement of your kind of your, your, your financial health and how your portfolio is doing. Um, and also give you some perspective of where you're at and compared to where you'd like to be or how much risk you'd like to take. And then it, it allows advisors to look at that portfolio just like you do in a non-custodial um, uh, way and make recommendations. So, so the beauty of this platform is an advisor can make recommendations on top of any protocol, um, whether it's something like a swap that would allow you to basically rebalance your portfolio or take profits off the table or even take a loss for tax loss harvesting purposes um, to optimizing things like yield and how much yield you're generating and where there are opportunities to, to optimize that. Um, we, we're, we're, we're basically building um, these uh, recommendations on top of decentralized protocols. So it's a, it's permissionless. Um, there's, that's the beauty of, of, of crypto as well. Uh, we don't, we don't need uh, to, to do like uh, private integrations with, uh, with companies. Anyone can build these integrations and we're providing value to uh, these financial professionals and uh, crypto natives. Well, how, how did you get into this? Why don't you talk a little bit just about your background? I mean, have you been a crypto person forever? Did you just get into it in the last couple of years or any, anything on that? Yeah, so um, I've, been, I've been doing uh, startups for over 10 years. Um, it, it started with uh, consumer social, um, education technology. And what got me into crypto uh, was I was running an online tutoring marketplace um, and we had tutors from over 40 different countries. And I was researching um, payment rails because we had a hard time paying all of these tutors um, on, 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 traditional, uh, on traditional rails. And so that got me into Bitcoin. And then later on, I started uh, looking into Ethereum and I just went down the rabbit hole as, um, as most people do. Once, once, you, once you kind of see what's out there, uh, you, you're sort of fascinated with, with the whole thing. And, and I knew immediately I had to basically drop what I was doing uh, and, and dive in. And so I did that in, in 2016. That's when I uh, became uh, both an investor and a, a builder in the space. And my, my first company in crypto was um, a, a non-custodial wallet that was also kind of a cryptocurrency assistant. It was called Ben. And our, our whole idea was to onboard people into crypto and give them access really educate them on crypto use cases. We, we wanted people to not simply speculate on, 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 this, um, on, on this space, but to actually use and, and allocate their assets for, for real life use cases. Um, it was lots of fun. We, we launched in, a, uh, in the middle of the bear market, was, which was very tough in 2018. Uh, we ultimately, unfortunately, had to shut down the company, but I, I knew I wanted to, to continue to build uh, products that brought people into the space. Um, and uh, at the time, this was 2018, now 2019, I ended up joining uh, a company called Bitso, uh, which grew to be, become the largest crypto player in LATAM. And uh, that, was, that was also a, a very fun three years. Um, and then ultimately, I became heavily invested uh, in, in the space and in, in both financially and, and, and personally. Ultimately, uh, that led to, uh, to L1. So something you said struck in that a lot of things, people will talk and there are a lot of things I want to say. But one, the one thing I want to ask you about is you said you were having trouble with payment rails. So you were having trouble paying people you were contracting out on consumer social you know, tutoring websites. Were these people in other countries outside the U.S.? Yeah, definitely. So, so we had about fifteen thousand tutors 
uh, out, many of them outside of the US. And so our, our main payment uh, or payout option was PayPal. And so PayPal for, for a lot of countries, um, you, you can't open a PayPal account unless you have a bank account. And so what we see was tutors borrowing friends and family members uh, PayPal accounts and actually getting paid in those PayPal accounts and then having to have or asking those those friends or family members to uh, do a remittance of that money through some other service, they ended up getting 50% or more less than what we paid them. And so that, that, was, uh, that was pretty pretty bad at the time. That's great. I mean, that's one of the things we always talk about, or like especially Matt Siegel from Van Eck and Gabor, is that the remittances and you know banking for the bankless is such a huge part of the you know crypto story? So it's always interesting, and and I love hearing about those kind of stories from you know uh, you know our, our our partners and colleagues because it's like it's a great story because you're doing something in a completely different field. You see this crazy problem, you see like the bad effects that it's having on somebody who doesn't have a bank account and you know another country, and then wow, there's a solution that you know could potentially be a huge game changer, and then, and then now you're here, right? And it's, it's fascinating to also see that in, in a bear market, um, you, you'll you see continued adoption in, in countries uh, like Argentina, like Venezuela. I'm, I was born and raised in Venezuela. I see how people are using uh, crypto every single day, regardless of the price action, because their their local economy is, is way more volatile, right? Eric... Maybe changing gears for a second, just thinking about look, the, the, one of the portions of Miguel's story that I really found fascinating was the Web3 wallet and, and walking customers through the experience, right, of, of how to buy crypto and, and manage their assets. What are you hearing from clients on your side, right, in terms of, you know, we, we recognize we have to onboard a lot of folks to Web3, but I'm just wondering from the, from the finance side of things, what are what are some of the, the trends you're seeing? What are what are the questions that are being asked? Like, where are people you know placing their attention right now? Oh man, um, how much time do we have? You have th- you have thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I'll 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 I'll, I'll get in aside. Um, w- one of the biggest trends in in the last couple of years and even more recently has been this natural intrigue and excitement for for the space. But there's a massive educational gap. And with people that we come across who are not just clients, but even um, uh, different professionals that we meet that arguably should be a heck of a lot smarter than I am, there's this lack of understanding. There's, there's that gap. That's probably one of the biggest things that I've seen emerge, but is still probably one of the biggest issues is we need to really close this educational gap. Uh, there's a number of organizations that are attempting to break through to that for uh, attorneys, for CPAs, for politicians, because they're going to be writing regulation on a number of these things that are evolving. Um, but I would say that's probably the most significant aspect. And honestly, some of these questions that I receive range from what is a Bitcoin to the other extreme where we have people talking about layer two protocols and um, even now layer three and everything going on with DeFi, which they're at another extreme. So. It's, it's all over left field, but what we're trying to do is embrace this as much as we can, share as much information as often as possible, uh, knowing that this is a huge and emerging asset class that could be a part of portfolios, but also it's a bigger conversation about wealth generation that doesn't necessarily have to be done always within traditional stocks and traditional bonds. This year being a classic example with bonds having literally their worst year ever. We are writing the script as we speak this year. Um, it, it lends its hand to why alternatives or a different way of thinking about wealth needs to be brought to the forefront. And that's where crypto comes into play. Uh, and even a bigger conversation about um, a, a lot of the individuals who are in the baby boomer generation and beyond, where you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars that are transferring from that generation to this generation that actually appreciates Web3, appreciates the social aspect, appreciates community. And this is what they aspire to be a part of. This is where they see wealth being created in some form. Um, And we want to be a part of that journey. Yeah. A lot of what you just said, I say in talks and stuff with advisors too. I don't know if you've been in one of some of those talks, but really lines up a lot. Like generational wealth, you know, the generational shift is huge. 
you know, uh, an attitude towards money, you know, the fact that the money is flowing from the baby boomer generation, the silent generation to the younger people who do things differently. They have different values, they care about different things, and they live their life differently online. And um, I think video games are a huge example of that. You know, people over the age of 45 or so don't really play video games. Younger people under 30, that's, that's a form of social media for them in a lot of ways. So, that's a lot of great points. And the other thing that you really, that resonated me with me was the education part. Cause that's what me and, you know, Matt Bartlett do all the time is we, and that's what I consider this, you know, recording a part of is, you know, talking about these kind of things to people maybe who are along this spectrum of, first of all, did you know there's a layer, layer zero? I just found out about this kind of recently. There's something called the layer zero protocol, um, well, which it, first. Right. Well, it's like, I don't even know what's going on there. So anyway, so there's people who know about layers, layer zero to layer three and are doing their own DeFi. And then there's people who are like, wait, what's a Bitcoin? You know, so there is this huge and it's like, who do you focus on? Right. And that's something that me and Bartlett always kind of are wrestling with is what, who are we talking to here? And it's it's I don't know, it's, it's an interesting conundrum and situation. Yeah. So one question I had going back to the the risk risk measure risk metric. Um, without giving away the, the secret sauce, if, if there is any there, what, what kind of, what, what goes into that metric, right? What, what, what is considered, uh, if I have a higher or, or low number? Yeah. So, so first of all, this is a product that we're, we're iterating on very quickly. So it'll, it'll constantly change. Um, what, what's going into it today is I, I tell you, there's, there's, there's two halves. The, the first half is kind of technical risk. We, we, we want to really look at the technical risk from a number of different angles. And, and, and we're looking at everything from um, the, the, the technical team, the, the engineers that are, that are building out the protocol, um, the, the, the source code, uh, how, how often it, it's been maintained, uh, whether there's been any audits on it, um, we, we are also relying a lot on, on third party analysis for this. We, in fact, we'd like to be as removed as possible from the, the different measurements and, and inputs that actually ultimately built this, this score. And we're working on also showing you where each uh, and, and every kind of point comes from. Uh, so you can see those third party um, analyses. Um, and there's also uh, on the other side there's the 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 economic risk. Um, so so what does the um, asset or or investment look like? For, again, from an investment perspective, uh, we we look at things like market cap, volume, um, how that's changed in in the last 24 48 hours. Um, we're, we're looking at um, market cap as 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 collectively. Um, kind of ranking tokens um, in um, a top 100, 400, 800, et cetera. And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different things that, that are going into it. The, the vision is to eventually open source that so that we can all speak the same language. I think, I think there's, a, there's a huge need in this space where any protocol, anyone building a, a decentralized um, uh, product and, 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 an, and an instrument really um, should be able to speak the same language to a potential user and say, this is where I rank in the risk spectrum, right? And so I think that that's ultimately better user experience. So we, we want to open that up at some point and, and um, yeah, be able to share that with other builders. I just have a question about the risk score. It's very interesting. Is that all on-chain only, or are you looking at things like stock market, interest rates, stuff like that? Or is it kind of like what's happening for the specific token or the token market cap? Can you talk anything about that? So the, the, the risk score and our entire product today is is entirely on chain. Um, I, and, and that's really because we, we're prioritizing um, what we're building and, and for who we're building. We're Today we're building for a, a crypto native individual who is largely on chain. Now, the, the, the interesting thing is we are we are getting asked from from these people uh, for, from our users uh, how do I even diversify some of my holdings outside of crypto or I have some holdings uh, outside of crypto and I'd, I'd love to, to be able to kind of see it all in the same place so we, we may and will probably end up considering like TradFi uh, platforms and, and, and going off chain even even within crypto looking at exchanges um, so so not necessarily, entirely on chain but but looking at things like centralized exchanges will also be important this will continue to, to yeah to evolve over time do you think there are a lot of advisors thinking like this or do you see yourself as kind of 
unique. I know there's I, I'm, I know there's more advisors who are thinking of this integration, but what do you see the landscape? At, you know, if you look, if you think about the however many hundreds of thousands of advisors there are in the United States, are you the are you the exception, or is it or is it is it growing, or what do you think? Yeah, um, it would be interesting to ask my colleagues and my wife. Is Eric unique? They might have some other words they would want to tie into that. But uh, the reality is, I I I think you have most advisors that will not touch the space of crypto or digital assets um, for a number of reasons. Demographically, they're just far removed from it. They can't get their mind around it. And for maybe the younger generation, they might be intrigued, but they might be prohibited from even talking about it. Give you an example with the brokerage firms. A lot of that is even just disallowed. Your accuracy and every other layer that's involved. The beauty of being an RIA or a registered investment advisor is I have the luxury to be able to look outside of the world of just traditional stocks and bonds, to be able to give advice that is holistic, to give advice that is in someone's best interest, but to give advice on really any asset or, or investment of any sort that I think could be beneficial to my client in their situation. So the point is, um, you already have this massive divide where there's a limited amount of people that are tying into this space um, because RIAs are just a very small sliver of financial services. We are a little dot within financial services compared to, what is it, roughly 98%, if not more, that is brokerage houses and insurance people. So already you have a select few that are a part of that world that are even intrigued. Then when you dive into those people who might be on the surface intrigued, you find that some of them are just starting to cross over to understanding Bitcoin and maybe getting to Ethereum, which for everyone on this call, I think we've all been past that for a while. Those are big deals years ago, still are, but no one's talking enough about DeFi. No, one, no one's talking enough about composability. No one's talking about now the layer twos and what's being built there, um, which is highly unique and, and, and sort of changing the landscape. Um, that is an even smaller subset. So. Uh, I, I would say maybe out of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people within financial services, you might have a couple of hundred that are really diving into these weeds. And I, I've only met a few that are interested within doing things in this form where they're not using, let's say, the traditional Coinbase or Gemini for custodialship, but instead saying, no, let's support crypto natives with their self-sovereignty where they actually do feel comfortable and frankly want to, if they're sticking to the core ethos of crypto, to basically sign their own, uh, sign their own signature, right? And to be able to say that I want to make the decisions for my money, for the sake of my privacy and my rights, I want to be there to be able to support those individuals. I think, again, many people are not there yet. I think eventually we'll be there, but it could be five, 10 years down the road. Um, I, I think we're we're innovating within this space with just the select few. Miguel, I'm I'm curious how uh, what wh where do we go from here? How do you scale L1? Sort of what's 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 the the roadmap if there is one from this point? Yeah, so um, we we're 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 focused on uh, basically starting to um, uh, work with crypto native individuals, uh, making making sure that we're helping them make better decisions. Um, and, and doing that with with basically um, a, a smaller number of clients. So so it is a product that is going to uh, take a few months to, to to basically iterate to the point where it's it's ready for the masses. So with that in mind, we we do have a wait list uh, for uh, clients wanting to work with advisors. All we want to do is really ensure that that uh, we're we're adding value to both clients and advisors. Um, the, the vision is that ultimately we, we allow people to, to get into crypto and, and, and to really put their, their crypto assets to work on, on real life use cases uh, with the help of, of advisors and, and, and with proper insights around, around risk and, and around um, their, their investment profile and, and their, their asset allocation strategy if they, if they ever have one. And that's going to take that's going to take some time and some work to, to get there, um, but ultimately we we want to be able to 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 serve the, the mass market. 
I, I do believe that in the future, we'll, we'll all be crypto natives. We'll all be transacting and interacting on, on crypto rails, whether we know it or not, whether we are um, knowingly signing our own uh, transactions with our own private keys or not. So we're building a platform that actually um, will, will, will live, up, live up to that uh, transition uh, and that transfer of, of wealth and assets. I do think we're going to see um, all sorts of financial services and, and primitives being built on chain. And we, we hope to be the platform um, where, where people do that in the future. Yeah, this has been really, really great. And I, I really appreciate both of you. Very thoughtful um, and intelligent answers and um, just overall really good. And this is the first recorded one. So I'm just really appreciate you guys coming on. So we're going to, we have, we do something, I don't know if you've seen on our live show, we do a lightning round sometimes if the vibes are, and I feel like we're vibing. So we're going to ask, if you're up for it, we ask you, you know, just kind of questions, uh, put you on the spot a little bit. Um, and so I don't know who wants to, who wants the first one, Miguel, Eric, what do you got? I'm scared. Have Miguel go. Eric, you want to go first? No, hell no. I, no, <laughs> I'll go first. I'm scared. Eric, what's your favorite uh, Web3 dApp? right off the top of your head and why Ooh, uh, uniswap because it was one of the first ones i actually dove into and it's the simplest did you get the uni tokens um um let, let's say no for the recording <laughs> call let's say no we, not, no we will no. that will be edited no. <laughs> what about you bartlett what's your favorite web3 dap i mean i, I like dap radar a lot you get a lot of insights at Adapt Radar. And it's a shameless plug in my Blubber Notes, um, blubbernotes.com, uh, coming out Monday. I, I'm actually going to highlight, I don't know, nine or 10 free, really solid dApps that I like. Um, so I'll have a list of them there. But yeah, Adapt Radar is a safe one. It's been around for a while. Miguel, feel, feel free to answer, or, or you just we're going to start you off with the next one. If you want, want me to ask the next one, you can go. It's up to you. No, uh, my favorite DAP would be OpenSea. I, I love their story. I, I love how 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 they they stuck to their vision and 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 built a fantastic uh, product and, and community. So okay, so following off that, what's your what's your favorite NFT project? And you're allowed to pump your bag if you want, but just disclose it before you do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I I I, I recently bought in um, Goblin Town. I I I hadn't seen a collection that. Uh, wasn't trying hard at all to 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 build something fun. They they did it um, they did it very um, uh, effortlessly. Or I mean, it, it, it sure made it look like that, like that. But uh, it, that's how much work it probably went into into building that. Um, so yeah, I, I I bought in and and I've been kind of uh, playing with all of the different activities that they've done uh, over the last few months. So it's been fun. What do you got? What do you got, Eric? I am a fan of what Van Eck has done. It's part of how Matt and I have been connected. But um, I, I need you guys to hear this, and I want other people to hear this too. Um, we've been, I've been watching this space personally and professionally with our firm for many years. And there have only been a couple of TradFi type firms that have actually been there for a while. Um, you have like the Fidelity Digital Assets, and you have... Um, um, a couple of others, but they really haven't done as much, in my opinion. They haven't expanded upon it. Van Eck has expanded upon it to where you guys have uh, been sort of the OGs from the beginning, even creating the the first NFT project from a TradFi firm, I think is hugely significant. It shows that you're sort of seeing the vision of the future. And then some of the uh, the creations that you guys have, some of these unique solutions, products that tie into a crypto is farther ahead than anyone else that's out there. And I'm watching everybody. You guys are the furthest ahead. So for those reasons, I'm a huge fan of that program. And, and but I also, and this is not to pump a bag. I, I don't um, want to pump anything. Um, if anything, it's more of, I'm just fond of the story. If you look on like Twitter, you'll see this as my, uh, uh, my avatar. Um, it, it's noun punks. And I, I love it because an OG project is now now. They've been around forever. And like that is the project. So they, a unique spin on it is basically having the noun big old glasses, right? Which is what they're known for, but putting that on a crypto punk, which is another OG project within the, within the space compared to everything else that is out there. Um, that gets me excited. It's about identity. It's about community. It's social. And honestly, I just think it's cool. It's, it's, 
the Web3 version of me with my mohawk and my red glasses. I think that's pretty kick-ass. Hey, well, Eric, thanks for the uh, for the for the nice comments, and uh, we're thrilled that you're in our community. And Miguel, you're a, you're a new entry to the community, right? I mean, hopefully, you received your NFT. You'll find out soon. There's a pretty rigorous hazing process that we put all new members through. <laughs> so uh, there's going to be an unmarked van pulling up outside your house <laughs> later tonight. So tell your wife that you might have to. You're going to be spending the weekend at an undisclosed location. <laughs> Uh, JP, I want to bring up one, uh, one, one uh, other thing. Yeah. I, I want to just bring something up that I think will be impactful for anyone who's on this, um, but especially for some of the advisors that might watch this. Um, it is important to think outside the box, and it's an, it really important to reimagine what wealth looks like, wealth creation. And to some of the points you mentioned earlier, um, there is a different focus on what wealth look like, looks like and what life fulfillment looks like um, for, let's say, the 20 and 30 year olds versus, let's say, the 60 and 70 year olds. This world speaks to that next generation. So either get on board or you're going to miss that opportunity. Um, It's some of my best advice. Well said. Maybe a year ago or so, uh, we had a webinar with Coinbase came on. It was along those lines, kind of like, look, this is about the future you know, ask yourself, what are you doing to learn about what's happening, you know, and and really kind of try to dig in on your own terms. And for me, that was NFTs, right? Like for me, that's when I went over, that's when I went over the waterfall. Um, You know, it sounds like Miguel, you went over the waterfall when you're trying to figure out how to pay somebody who's done work for you, where it's hard for them to access money. Matt Bartlett, you've been, you're buying Decentraland before anybody knew what it was, you know, like, so we all have our own little journeys. And it's just interesting that, when people come together and talk about stuff like this. So thanks a lot for being here, Eric, Miguel, and as usual, uh, Matt Bartlett. Um, I had a great time, great discussion. I learned a lot and um, I don't have any closing thoughts. I might, might if I, uh, I don't know, I'm spaced out. Go to l1advisors.com, connect your wallet. Go to l1advisors.com and link up your wallet. Eric, I don't have your website on hand, but we'll, you know you can reply in the comments to, to the YouTube and we, you know, we can all... Uh, carry this conversation on uh, on social media and the various platforms. Really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you very much. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks.